Y'all ready to be history? Yeah, all right, hey, there we go. We're out of here. All right, here we go, that's it. Sway, yeah. so before we get started, will you please sign this oh, 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 shit, damn, wow. Oh, wow. Look at how, yo, you look, look like a that. kid. You're a kid there. Damn, man, I was a baby, bro. That's crazy. That's our teenage years. Y'all didn't know I had bars once once upon a time, huh? Yeah, you want me to say Marshall? You want me to say? Yes, please. Okay. That's M-A-R. That's H-A-L-L. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Look Hell at that, yeah, man. man. I signed a, a vinyl for him, man. Look at that, man. Look at Incredible. Look Yo, at you're, shit. yeah, man, your signature's so much better than mine. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, man, you threw me off with that. <laughs> Fucked you up your whole shit? Not really. Uh, I'm just impressed that you dug that deep in the crates, man. I didn't know you. I'm always digging in the crates. Uh, that's good to know, man. That's good yeah. to know. Do you want to use any lyrics from any of those songs on that vinyl, bro? Well, that, that, I was going to ask you when the cameras are off. There's a couple bars that I wish I could have. Yeah, that's cool, man. Go ahead, man. What's, no. what's mine is yours, man. If, it, if it'll make your shit tighter, you know. Let's speak on bars, though. Here we are. <clears throat> um, Kamikaze <clears throat> came out. You know, you shocked the world the way you did it. What, what, what made you do it? I mean, a revival came out December 2017. That wasn't that long ago. It was less than a year. What made you just drop it on the world the way you did? Because I feel like, I feel like the way the climate is right now, if you give people if you give people enough time to, oh, I got an album coming out in two months. You give people time to say, man, he better have a song like this or I ain't fucking with it. If he don't have a song like this, I ain't fucking with it. Yeah. He better not be rapping like this. He better not be rapping about this or I'm not gonna fuck with it. And when you go into an album, you can go into anything with the mindset of this is gonna suck. Mm. And then even if, if, even if you kind of don't feel that way, you're already kind of, formed your opinion in front of all your friends and you know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like, I feel like um, giving them no warning was the best thing to do just because it doesn't give people enough time to, you know, when the revival track list came down the pipe. Yeah, I remember that. It was like, overwhelmingly, this shit is gonna be trash. Yeah. And that was before Nobody people, really yeah. wanted to be wrong about it. Yeah. They had already formed, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people had already, you know, formed their opinions, so. Yeah, that was interesting. Like, Revival really got ran through the ringer, so to speak, um, before it even got off the ground. Uh, but, you know, it, it, this is that day and age, you know, it's oh, yeah, now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, how have you adjusted to that? Like, before, which is what I find interesting about you before you spent your whole career being critiqued and criticized by organizations like LGBTQ community or college campuses or yeah. police departments, you know, but hip hop always stood by you. So that was, yeah. you know, that's where you found your refuge. But now it came from inside of hip hop. You know, how did that affect you? Me sitting back and, and seeing things that I saw, it was kind of like I felt like I felt a bunch of different ways. I felt like, okay, maybe because it doesn't sound like everything else and, and, and what, um, what most people are doing, mm -hmm. maybe that was what tainted their ear. Because I remember a time in hip hop where you had to be so different from the next person or you were trash. There's a shift uh, somewhere that happened that if it doesn't sound like everything else, then it's trash automatically. Yeah. And I just said back like, okay, all right, I can take that. It's not like I can't take constructive criticism, but I feel like it kind of went beyond constructive criticism. So I had to go back to it and, and look, I have made albums that definitely probably would not be my the top of my list. Mm -hmm. what, what, Encore. Okay. Relapse, which I believe Encore is a better album than Relapse. Relapse is something that I looked at in a couple of years, went back to and, and cringed at. Mm. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. I didn't even realize I was doing that many accents. I, only, I just started, for whatever reason, I just got into it and was just like, started on this weird serial killer vibe kind of thing. Yeah and started wanting to talk crazy and started bending words more. And the only way you can bend them, bend them is with this accent, trying to use this one. Like, 
And a couple years later, I, you know, in, in, in making recovery and slipping out of that, getting out of the accents and beyond it, um, made recovery. Yeah. And I always say that if it wasn't for relapse, I wouldn't have been able to make recovery. And if it wasn't with, if it wasn't for revival, I wouldn't have been able to make this album. So I'm good with it. It just, you know, some people more than others went a little, a little, little far with it. A little far with it. I, I want to get into that um, uh, too. And I almost, you know, when I listen to Kamikaze and I hear some people say, man, that's the vintage M we wanted, you know, uh, we wanted Shady back, right? And when I listen to it, man, I, I have to admit, man, I hear something in you on this album that kind of made me rejoice in the way I've done um, in the past. I like the fact that you're not running from the criticism. I like the fact that in this digital age, you're not, you know, cowering and then reforming to what people think you should sound like or how people think you should act and you're yeah. calling it out. And I actually like some of these review shows that you see on YouTube and they take people's music yeah. and they have fun with it. I look at these kids M, and, I, and I see us when we were young. I mm -hmm. see myself when I was younger before Absolutely. YouTube and we'd go through a G-Rap album and oh, this was dope, that was dope. Yeah. A Far Side album, this was dope. Yep. They just kind of doing that, right? right? Uh, and you address them. So you're that in tune, like in the, in the beginning of the ringer when you talk about if you critique, critique me, you know, you can make millions. If I critique you, there's nothing I really. Yeah, it gets into the territory where it's like, it's like um, you got, okay, so, so since the internet has become what the internet's become, yeah. and since YouTube and all that, you've got so many, how can I say this? It's, it's almost like not enough Indians, too many chiefs. Mm. So it's like um, somebody, Everybody on the internet, and in, in hip hop especially, is, it seems like either a rapper, a DJ, a writer, a producer, does something, has something to do with it. And it's, and, and I love the fact, I love the fact that so many people now have been able to get on easier than it was for me or you. Mm -hmm. back in the day because we didn't have that we didn't have this platform so i appreciate the platform it's just that now you've got now you've got people that not only are doing the same thing and they can do it better but you've got people who don't do anything and are just critiquing it so i sat back and i'm like okay that's fine people can talk crazy about me that's fine they should they should uh express themselves and they have a right to but I also get to say whatever the fuck I want about you now. Mm. I'm, like I said, I'm good with revival. Fuck it. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't have made this album without that. Yeah. And there is something, I'm not gonna lie, there is something inside me that is a little more happy when I'm angry. It's like, as much as I, as bad as it feels yeah. to be there, there's also something about it, there's a rush of it that I like because it inspires me to say something back. So you get in that weird area too where it's like, oh, he says he doesn't care about what anybody thinks about him, but now he cares about what everybody thinks about him. No, he's just saying he don't care. He'll say anything he wants about you if you say it about him because he doesn't care. Like there's so many different levels to not caring about shit. You know what I'm saying? But. It was interesting. It was definitely interesting because I'm like, how fucking off is my ear? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Like, and then, and then it was interesting to watch the reaction of the Chloroseptic remix verse that I did. Yeah, with Two Chains, and you put yeah. that out in January, and you kind of, you touched on, you guys formed your opinion just from a track. And that's list. where I was at. Yeah. It, it, at that point in time, that's yeah. definitely where I was at. But. I watch people going, oh, why wasn't this on Revival? Honestly, I pro what if I said it was on Revival? You won't know because you didn't listen probably. Yeah. But I kind of felt like, okay, I guess this is what people might want. Because I'm always stuck in that, what the fuck do people want? Like, like you were saying that the OM is back and he's too old to be the OM. Mm -hmm. He can't do it. Like, no matter what, when I zig, I should have zagged. 
no matter what, you got half and half every fucking single time. You, you kind of say that, you allude to it in, in, in one of the songs where you said that you set the bar so high that, yeah. you know, at this point, you know, uh, everything's considered a failure. Like, you're almost competing with yourself. Yeah. Um, and you touch on it a lot in every song. Well, not every song, but majority of songs you touch on it, I appreciate. But I have to, like, the Joe Button thing is... It's uh, really interesting because that, along with MGK, of course, is making a lot of noise out there. Mm -hmm. And it, th it throws a lot of folks off when Joe um, first started commenting. Um, it was mixed reactions. Some people said it was disloyal. Some people said, man, he's entitled to his opinion. Mm -hmm. I would assume that obviously it got under your skin, considering the relationship you've had with him with Slaughterhouse. Yes. How, do you, how, did, how do you describe your relationship with Joe Budden? Uh, you went in on MGK, you guys had a discrepancy. You know, you go down the fucking wormhole of YouTube and whatever, right? <laughs> so I see Machine Gun Kelly talks about Eminem's daughter, whatever, right? So what the fuck? Click on it. Like, yo, why is he? Then he starts doing a, a press run, basically, about Haley. I'm like, what the fuck? Yo, my man better yeah. chill, right? So that's not why I dissed him. The reason I dissed him is actually a lot more petty than that. Now I'm in this fucking weird thing because I'm like, I gotta answer this motherfucker. 